Hi everyone, my name is Michael. I'm Erica. Today we're going to chat with you about some things that reduce some anxiety and make us feel a little bit better. There have been some recent world events that have made a lot of us pretty anxious, and you may be experiencing the same anxiety for the same reasons as us, or for potentially any number of reasons. So we just wanted to talk about some of the media that we've been consuming that help lower our anxiety levels. And I want to have two little qualifiers real quick. One, this idea was inspired by Just the Gems on YouTube. So check out his video, it's really good. One of my favorite YouTubers who does gaming stuff. So I highly recommend that if you wanna check that out. Second, and this is the same disclaimer as his, we are not licensed therapists by any means. So we're not giving you any like real advice. These are just some things that worked for us and will hopefully work for you. So grab your mug of hot cocoa or wine, as it's the case for me. That's one of the things that I've been partaking a little bit too much in to help make me feel better. Let's try to encourage the habits that are healthier than that one that I just showed <laughs> and talk about some coping skills that might make us feel a little bit better. I'm starting with music because that's where my brain is. I'm really into like empowering pop ballads. I don't know if you know Skyscraper by Demi Lovato is like my go-to right now, but so is Breathing by Ariana Grande. I'll stand by you. The 90s <laughs> jam. I've actually, I'm, and I'm sad to say this because I missed my opportunity to talk about this album when we hit the year it came out, but I've been listening to a Vanessa Williams album, actually, which is called Comfort Zone. It's the album that Save the Best for Last is from. My friend Wayne recommended it to me, and I wasn't expecting to enjoy it the way that I that I enjoyed it. I've always sort of embarrassingly written off Vanessa Williams, but she's way more talented than people give her credit for. She was um, Miss America. Yeah. I saw a comment on one of the uh, videos as I was listening to it. She's the only Miss America anyone cares about or remembers. <laughs> and wasn't she like, wasn't there like a controversy? Wasn't she like decrowned or whatever? Yeah. Decrowned because, yeah. because like she was in Playboy or something. Yeah. And they took away her crown. Yeah, Crowns. but anyway, um, that's also that's exactly <laughs> D and D, D and D, honestly, is getting me through. In some ways, I think tabletop role-playing games are the ultimate form of escapist media and entertainment because you're literally creating an imaginary world and going off and living in it instead of like, I don't know, gardening or whatever other people are doing. That is actually a productive way of letting off steam. Anyway. How much Three Houses have you been playing, Ramin, though? None, actually. I've been playing some triangle strategy, which oh. I think you would enjoy, and we I can will. talk about at a time when we won't bore the hell out of Molly. Molly, what about you? Something what? that I always go to for years when my blood pressure is high, when I'm really stressed and I need to like bring the temperature down, is Bach keyboard music. <laughs> I think what I like about Bach keyboard music for this particular purpose is when I feel like things are spinning out of control. The Bach is so precise and ordered and orderly and clean. And I can always count on it to just, you know, you know that music is gonna resolve in a certain way and that every five is gonna lead to one or six maybe, but it, like it's two choices. The other thing that I turned to this week in particular that gave me a lot of comfort was Singing in the Rain. Uh, I watched Singing in the Rain and Gene Kelly's 10,000 watt smile. <laughs> Actually, what I love is the good morning that's sequence. The best, that's the best part of the movie. That and the of course, the singing in the rain number also. It's become cliche and we f so we forget how good it actually is. Gene Kelly's singing when he says, I'm singing in the rain. Like it's so, like you could just wrap it around you. But I don't know, there's something about Good Morning. Partially because it has the two other people in it. my favorite, yeah. Um, and, the, and what I love is at the end of the number, the big finale, when they the jump up on the couch and they tip it over and yeah, then they all fall so down. So great. 1950s movie musicals. So Erica, what have been the pieces of comfort media for you? I will start kind of akin to something Molly was talking about. Before certain events, in the, in the weeks leading up to that, I was under a lot of stress. So somebody reminded me, just watch a movie. 
And I have obviously a, a to watch list like most people do. And I said, you know, I'm going to watch more movies. And I did. And one of my favorite that I saw during this sort of period was to watch La La Land for the first time. And it was very much like those old school musicals done in a really excellent 21st century way. The music was wonderful and well-written, but also like not obtrusive to the movie. It was part of the movie that was there and very important. I had also been reading recently about concentration and focus, and there are video games and gaming in general does kind of help because what it does is it gives your brain a break from the anxiety of day-to-day -day life by getting you engaged in the processes of winning a game. And that's not just strategizing, but it's also tactile, it's repeat practice, it's thinking and problem solving in different ways. So I have been thinking about that a lot lately and I've been revisiting some of my old school Nintendo favorites more on my Switch. But specifically people have talked about a game that I love called Two Dots on my phone. And that one's a really good one for the zoning out qualities of getting your focus back. If you can play one of these games for 10, 15 minutes, it is said that you can kind of rekindle your focus. And I find relief some stress by letting your hands do the work and zoning out just a little bit with it. As a singer and a choral director myself, I really turn to good choral music in a time like this. I made a playlist for my choir a number of years ago to help them with difficult times, times of unrest, and it's all just my favorite choral music, but just really excellent recordings of it where you can really hear the intricate harmonies and just really well done. So um, we will share that, including one by a group that I sing with called the Washington Master Chorale. It's our recording of uh, Rachmaninoff. I think finding a variety of things that help you ease your own mind is good because A, it gives you variety, and B, it gives you things that you can recommend to other people so that we can help each other in even these little ways of like, hey, have you tried playing Two Dots on your commute home? Not if you're driving, but you know, if you're on the Metro like me, it's great. The media that I've been gravitating toward has been mostly music. I actually haven't had a lot of time to game lately, and I would like to get back to finishing Arc the Lad 2, which will be coming out on the channel at some point. But I've been really into an album by this artist named Mount Erie. Mount Erie's new album is called Night Palace, and he is a lo-fi, like, indie DIY singer-songwriter who's been doing this for a very long time. All of this album and many of his albums actually are actually kind of depressing, and it's the kind of music that you want to just put your headphones on and lie on your back on the floor and just let it like wash over you. And I've been feeling that I'm actually getting a little bit of catharsis from it. Something that's just making me feel, you know, sad or other sort of negative thoughts. But then like my body's reaction to that is helping get rid of the stress that's already there. That's sort of similar to how I every once in a while go back to Richard Strauss's piece Metamorphosen, which is one of my favorite pieces of all time, but it's devastatingly sad. There's no text to it. It's all just strings, but it's still one of the saddest pieces of instrumental music that I've ever heard. It's so beautiful though, too. I like it partially because Strauss was dealing with a similar loss of faith in humanity at the time, because it was right at the beginning of World War II, High Finn's Tale, <laughs> feeling like really despairing about humanity at the time. And it's kind of nice to connect with someone, maybe not on the same scale, but you know, we, we share some thoughts across the generations there. But on the other hand, I've also been listening to Laura Marling's new album, Patterns and Repeat. And she is a singer-songwriter that I've loved for a very long time. Uh, her 2013 album, Once I Was an Eagle, is one of my favorite albums of all time. She is just a very soothing presence in music. She's got a gorgeous, rich, low voice that she uses to great effect. And this new album of hers is about her new experiences in motherhood. She has a young child. There's a lullaby on the album that Molly especially really loves and it's it's really beautiful so I think that is serving sort of another purpose of just like itself calming soothing it's like a warm bubble bath whereas the other media is sort of like a cold shower that forces you to deal with it one of the most important things we can do at any sort of difficult time in life is to really honor those feelings and be present with it and sometimes sometimes you do need a distraction but finding a, a sense of place within those feelings is really important music does that better than anything i know you have to know kind of what you're in the mood for i'm not turning to upbeat 90s pop right now you know sometimes you know that you want to 
dig in on some of these more depressing albums and just cry a little and that's what they're there for to help you feel and express those feelings which is something we as a society we're not always consistently great at doing that and we all just need to honor that also at the same time it's fine if you feel that you need the distraction of just listening to the happy pop music i think there's absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with that everyone needs to deal with whatever emotions they have in the way that seems best for them and no one should tell you to do that any differently unless they're a trained therapist. Which we are not. But I have been talking with a lot of people about our comfort binge watching, the kind of TV shows especially that we just kind of let play in the background while we're working or doing chores or just watching them just to zone out, you know? And we all kind of say it like sort of tongue in cheek, like we're, we know we shouldn't. I don't think there's any way you should feel about what you choose to binge or what you choose to just lose yourself in for a little while or not. You know, Star Trek got me through the lockdown in the pandemic. There's nothing wrong with revisiting those go-tos. And there's also nothing wrong with wanting to explore new things. So experiment with both would be my advice. Let your instincts tell you what you need in that moment. So if we were going to pull some threads of what we were all talking about. Ramin, the music he was listening to was all sort of empowering, empowering pop ballads. He wanted to get some I can do it feelings from the music he was listening to. And then other than that, D&D &D and Triangle Strategy are just an escape into a fantasy world that is also completely healthy if you need to do that. Molly talked about listening to Bach keyboard music because of its predictability and the order and sometimes when things are chaotic in the world, it's nice to be able to find something that seems very ordered and everything happens as you expect it to. And then she talked about Singing in the Rain and 1950s movie musicals, sort of like you talking about La La Land as just sort of an escape, but one into joy and not into a fantasy world. I guess movie musicals are a fantasy world. Also, the old movies are more about watching and enjoying it from the outside whereas D, D you're more involved so there's yeah. there's both of those elements at play and then for me we talked about catharsis and comfort as two different tools that kind of work well together like start with catharsis and then go to comfort that works really well for me actually my big one is to really get in touch with your emotions and to check in with yourself know who you are and what you want and maybe even use this as a chance to explore some of that but to to give yourself options Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, I am going to put a bunch of links in the description of this video, but I encourage you that if there's anything that brings you some comfort, add your links in the comments. I'd like to see that. We can all share that. We could use this as a crowdsourced list of things that bring us comfort. This is a little bit of an outlier for what we typically do on the channel. We typically give reviews and ramblings and rankings and whatnot, other things that might not start with R about video games and music mostly, but media in general. If you're interested in any more of that sort of stuff, check out our channel and look for the playlists because I've got a playlist for video games. I've got a playlist for the music theory classes that I give, things like that. You can find what you're looking for in the playlists typically. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Please give it a pity like, even if you didn't like it. It's not gonna hurt you, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. Two, this side is a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so check that out. Up there in the corner is the button to get to our channel where you can find all the things that I was just talking about. And that should be about it for today. Maintain your groovy selves. <laughs>